Episode 35, A Fondness for Male Sheep, originally posted August 14, 2013. One of the main reasons why the original Masters of the Universe toy line was so successful was because of the relatively resourceful method they employed for making toys for all the numerous characters. Two words, shared parts. Look at every Masters figure and you will notice that almost 90% of them share the same crotch furry underwear piece. Over 90% have the same body structure. And when it comes to arms, feet, and so on, you will usually find only a few variations of each scattered among hundreds of figures. More often than not, the only unique items each character would have were their head sculpts, armor, and weapons. And even a good number of those were used at least more than once. Because He-Man was so successful, Mattel also turned to another common practice in order to beef up their toy line. They used existing sculpts and toys from some of the older, lesser-known brands, gave them new paint jobs and accessories, and incorporated them into the Master's Mythos. And so using that method from random animals from the older Big Jim line, we got iconic Master's characters like Battle Cat and Zor. And then we have one character who basically sprung up like a spring into the line. While I'm not entirely sure if this was an entirely new mold or reuse from another toy line, it's quite obvious that the original Ram Man toy literally broke the mold in the Master's toy line. He was as unique as you could get, with not a single other character looking anything remotely like him. Just by looking at him, you could make out the obvious differences. First of all, he was much wider than your typical Master. And secondly, he only had two real points of articulation, his arms which could turn from side to side, and that was it. His head was sculpted as one piece, and the rest of his body and his two legs were fused together as well. He was practically a brick with arms. But you see, there was a reason why Ram Man was constructed that way. He actually had an action feature that none of the other figures had. You could press down his legs into his body, and then at the press of a button, well, I'm assuming it was a button since I never had the original figure, his upper half would spring forward to simulate a ramming action, thus his name. Ram Man. So no, he didn't get his name from having a fondness for male sheep. When 2002 came along, a new He-Man toy line was launched to coincide with a new cartoon. Unlike the original line, most of the characters actually had nice unique sculpts that were very stylized and detailed. Not to be left out, Ram Man also sported a more modern sculpt as well. And he also had the same action feature as the original toy, which unfortunately meant similar articulation as well. Well, I believe the articulation of this newer version was slightly better as he could now turn his head and wrists and his arms were swivel ball joints. He still had his legs sculpted as one piece to allow the same springing action. Anyway, a few years later, Mattel launched the Classics toy line, which was meant for nostalgia-driven older collectors like me. Now, I know I've touched on this before, but just to summarize, this line was meant to be more faithful to the original vintage toys, except that they would have more realistic and detailed sculpting as well as a ton more articulation. And just like the vintage line, they would be using the same shared part system to keep costs down. In addition, from the very start of the line, Mattel also said that none of the new figures would sport any action features, even if their original counterparts did. Again, this was meant to cut down on costs and keep things simple. So this meant that, although beautifully sculpted and articulated, the new Cobra Khan would no longer spit water, Mechanic would not extend his neck when you twisted his waist, and none of the new battle armors would sport that nifty spring-loaded battle damage action. All of these features were stimulated by additional exchangeable parts instead. Of course, people immediately started speculating on Ram Man. Mattel already said that a new Ram Man would probably be a long shot, considering it would entail a 100% unique new body that would have almost 0% reuse potential. But the fans remained faithful, and to their credit, the line was a major success, and by late 2012, speculation was high that a new modern Ram Man was just around the corner. It would be in San Diego Comic Con 2012, where Mattel would finally make their big reveal. A new Ram Man would arrive in 2013, and because of their no action feature policy, they dropped Ram Man's springing action altogether and instead gave us our first fully articulated Ram Man ever. A compromise I would make any day of the week. And the detailing in this guy was amazing, down to the soles of his boots. When I finally got my Ram Man in hand, he definitely did not disappoint. And just for an added bonus, they included something new. This Ram Man had an alternate unhelmeted head which is in reference to the 2002 cartoon where he would often take off his helmet. Truth be told, his face isn't really much to look at and he really is better off with his signature helmet. But it was a nice touch. 
Finally, in 2020, as part of the new Origins line for Mattel, Ram Man made his return as a deluxe sized release. Now, the Origins line was basically a complete redo of the original vintage line, except this time with a whole lot more added articulation. Given that I already had a rather robust classics collection, I didn't feel the need to go in on yet another He Man line. But I did make an exception for Ram Man. See, towards the end of the classics line, Mattel started a subline called Club Grayskull, which featured filmation style versions of the main He Man characters, most of whom had significantly different or simpler designs than the toys. Unfortunately, Ram Man, who did have a distinct cartoon look, wasn't released before the line abruptly ended. Now, while this Origins Ram Man was basically the original toy with slightly better articulation, I saw the potential in fitting him into my Club Grayskull display. See, while he has been commonly portrayed as a bit of a giant in most Masters iterations, in the Filmation cartoon, Ram Man was a bit of a shorty. So, size-wise, this new Origins figure could work. All I needed was to find a local talented customizer to do all the dirty work of cleaning up some of those details. Enter Paolo Yap of Team Yap Customs, who was able to give me the Ram Man I was looking for. If you're in Manila and need some action figure custom work done, definitely check out Paolo. Aside from being quite skilled, he clearly has the passion, especially when it comes to doing X-Men customs. And his rates are very reasonable. I'll place a link to his page in the description below. Anyway, that should basically cover everything I have to say about Ram Man. While he wasn't one of my favorite characters in Masters of the Universe, it cannot be denied that he is an essential requirement in any decent Motu collection. But if there are any big fans of Ram Man out there, or Ram Men, or Rams in general, comment below and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. If you enjoyed this story, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to help me tell more. Until the next one.